Very well. And our first speaker today during this session, and I can't see Alexei, by the way, but we have more seats available. Anyway, the first speaker at the conference is our good friend, someone who's been coming to our conference many, many times, Chris Mendini, uh, director of the European ICANN office. Uh, good to see you, Chris. I understand that you're in Brussels right now. So, um, what's the ICANN news? Thank, thank you very much. Do you hear me well? Wonderful. Uh, yes, we can see you and we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, I am delighted to be here and I have to thank you very much, Andre, and also uh, thank and congratulate the Coordination Center for this amazing conference. It is the biggest and the best uh, in the region and 16 years of success is a testament uh, to that. I'm delighted to give one or two updates of what's happening at ICANN, but I note among the panel, there are many deep experts who are active in the community as technical partners who also often know the details. But I'm happy to give a very brief overview uh, and an update on the first slide that I present, which may be difficult to read. Uh, it shows a timeline. And if we could show the timeline, I will just point out that that points uh, uh, to the progress of uh, a program that many of you are very interested in, which is the future expansion of the generic top-level domains. Uh, as you know, in recent weeks, we have tipped into implementation phase, which means there is a definitive timeline with an anticipated uh, applicant guidebook to be prepared for early 2025 and applications for the operation of these registries to be accepted in early 2026. Though I assure you that both in the community and in the organization, everybody is working as hard as they can to make the timelines uh, as fast as possible. So the work as a, on the applicant guidebook is already underway, as are implementation programs for things like applicant support for organizations that may need support, uh, financial or training to prepare an application to run a registry. And um, one of the very, very big pushes in this particular round of GTLDs will be in the promotion of internationalized domain names or IDNs. And already we have started working with public relations, media partners and others in, in geographies uh, such as uh, uh, South Africa, Trinidad, United Arab Emirates, to really begin the discussion about promoting uh, uh, IDNs and generic names to help uh, build community and bring more uh, digital inclusivity into uh, the global domain name system. Uh, so here is the timeline, and I'll endeavor to get you a link to this because, I, as I said, I think it's not so easy to read here. But also, as I said before, I suspect people very interested are already following much closer uh, and know all of the details uh, as well or better than I do. Um, I want to just turn to my second slide, and this is about uh, the topic of universal acceptance. You heard me mention internationalized domain names, whether they're in Cyrillic or Arabic or Mandarin or Greek or whatever language or alphabet. Um, the big challenge is, of course, getting uh, software developers, operators of browsers, operators of search engines and so forth to accept and recognize these names, whether they're longer 
top level domain level domains or in diverse scripts. And so one of the big initiatives to promote that is Universal Acceptance Day. And I'm pleased to announce that the 2024 Universal Acceptance Day will be March 24th. Uh, but there will be events planned around the world on or about or near that date. And there was a very, very successful one uh, that many of you participated in, hosted in Armenia last year. And I'm looking forward to more progress. I know that this particular group spends a lot of time on essentially communicating to the whole world uh, about the need to be ready for these uh, domains. And I see this work really as a way to honor the very hard work and dedication of more than 300 people who've been working now over 10 years across 44 countries, uh, many tens of thousands of volunteer hours to make these diverse scripts and alphabets work for the, the next uh, users of the internet around the world. Of course, there are a couple of other items I could touch upon. Uh, we will be publishing a set of CEO goals. We have an interim CEO named Sally Kosterton uh, for the foreseeable few months. And the board of directors just this weekend approved some goals, which will enshrine some of these uh, topics that I've just been discussing. And then finally, uh, ICANN 78 uh, is the 78th public meeting in Hamburg, October 21st. Uh, virtual or in-person uh, participation is available. Interpretation in seven languages as usual. And I'm uh, hopeful that I'll see many of you uh, there. Um, and finally, I have to uh, thank uh, my colleague, Misha Anisimov, who I suspect all of you know, um, he has any, uh, any and every detail that you may need if you're interested in becoming more involved or following the programs more closely or putting on any communication program of your own about GTLDs, about universal acceptance, about the work of ICANN, well, so many of you are already excellent partners to make links across the region. And uh, a large part of this uh, support comes from Misha. So I wanna say thank you to him as well. So Andre, I'll turn it back to you. And again, say thank you and congratulations. It's always a pleasure to be part of this excellent event. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, we have several questions, if you don't mind. Well, first of all, we'd like to thank ICANN for this uh, initiative, the Universal Acceptance Day in our region. Yerevan hosted the first uh, Universal Acceptance Day, um, and we believe that it was a success story. Uh, many students participated, uh, the you know, IT students, um, students of law, um, uh, as to the regional Universal Acceptance Day next year, uh, we are currently negotiating with Belgrade. As to ICANN, um, as far as I understand, ICANN is now placing special emphasis on implementation, not just information uh, uh, raising awareness, but the main focus today is on implementation. Is my understanding correct? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Uh, Again, as I mentioned, it's a big challenge to essentially tell the whole world <laughs> about something that's happening uh, technologically. And so really it has come in phases. The first phase is really simple awareness raising. The second phase, I would say last year, and in Yerevan we saw this very well, was more like training. Uh, 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 training people about universal acceptance. And this year, this next universal acceptance will really feature actual tools, uh, code libraries, uh, uh, tutorials to, to actually work together on how to enable 
uh, universal acceptance and, and I accept IDNs in your systems. And again, uh, ICANN and the Universal Acceptance Steering Group, we have a model where we will provide the material. So whatever, uh, I, if Belgrade is a, and the, you are all gathering there to do an event, we will work to provide as much content, coding libraries, experts, speakers, presentations to make it a success. But yes, we're moving into implementation phase. So I'm glad that you asked. Thank you very much. And there is another quick question this morning. We learned that ICANN started public discussions or rather, no, not public discussion, uh, but the preparing the public discussions for the next five year development plan. How can participants from our region participate in this work? Ah, that's another excellent question. And again, a testament to how well up to date and closely involved this community is uh, with the ICANN work. So I'm delighted by the question. Yes, as you know, we operate on a five-year cycle of strategic plans. And uh, in fact, today I'm speaking with colleagues to find out how for European stakeholders, I'm hoping at the Hamburg meeting to have an initial gathering to facilitate some inputs to this plan. But that's just one of the many gatherings that we will facilitate. It's a very inductive process where essentially we ask all of the stakeholders in every category, what is their vision for the future? What risks do they perceive? What do they think the direction of the domain name system should be? And uh, we take in all of that data to co-create a strategy for the organization with the community. So it's it's brand new. We are just now putting some actual gatherings uh, onto the calendar. And please be assured that all of you will have an opportunity. I'm encouraging all of you, please, to participate and give your ideas. Thank you very much. And the very final question. It's been a long while since the new director, the search for a new director. I can direct uh, has been going on. So uh, do you have any news about that? Uh, I, I know that the board of directors met over the weekend in Istanbul. I know also that this topic was on their agenda and the next stage in the process was for the board to appoint an executive search firm. What I don't know is what was the outcome of that meeting but uh, you will all probably have seen the candidate uh, uh, application profile. And uh, there were a series of executive search firms competing to have the uh, tender from the board. And I believe it is awarded or very close to being awarded. And uh, then I expect a communication in the coming days about the timeline. The last indication of a timeline was that a, a full-time CEO would be appointed in the early part of uh, next year, uh, uh, the first quarter, ideally, but there may be an update coming very shortly. Again, it's a very timely question. Thank you very much, Chris, uh, for your answers. Thank you for being so open with us and judging by the uh, response from the audience here, everyone is happy with your update. Uh, thank you for staying in touch with us, with our region. And Mikhail Anisimov, Misha Anisimov, uh, indeed invests his time and, and and mind and, and soul into this work. And during the next couple of days, we're going to have several more speakers for, for speakers from ICANN. So again, uh, thank you for being so responsive uh, to our needs. And now I'd like to pass the microphone to the general director and general partner of our conference. Um, please welcome Alexey Rogdiev from uh, TCI, Technical Center Internet. Thank you very 
Good morning, colleagues. That's for all the slides. Well, actually, yesterday, um, offline, we had a discussion of the um, new um, registration system testing. We uh, were running Oracle before, but uh, now we migrated completely away from Oracle, and now uh, we are uh, testing uh, open source uh, software-based registration system. As to the domain uh, registrations, the dynamics is positive, and uh, you can see that we recovered on the previous year and the last, uh, or rather, on the last three years. Uh, this year, the dynamics is definitely positive, which is uh, something that makes us happy. Uh, we know that the number of registrations correlates with the uh, health of the national economy. Judging from this plot, uh, the new normal has rooted itself and has become normal. The registration system is developing. Uh, we launched the uh, new registration uh, system with new attributes, including a SIA, Integrated System of Identification and authentic Authentication. On the 29th of May, we also launched our DAP module for the .su register. During the closed session yesterday, we talked about the new system of registration and normalizing the um, registrant contact data for .ru.rf. We have a wonderful service to assess the safety of internet domains and the services that stand behind the domains. Uh, TLS and uh, mail uh, web services are included. There are about 80 items on which the checks are run. And if the domain uh, services settings are found to be incorrect. The system offers its recommendations as to how the falls can be fixed. The service is also uh, developing constantly. We added a big blog related to uh, the mail services this year, including DMOG data and SPF data checks and STUTLS, uh, or TLS for STUTLS check. The um, services that we we'll launch, uh, we um, attach statistics uh, to the services uh, at uh, the Stardom, Stardom, and we know that in that you half of the domains carry a mail service, and DMARC policies are the ones responsible uh, for sending the uh, emails. Uh, well, only 5% of the domains have DMARC policies. And uh, as to the services that are compliant with uh, mail.ru and Yandex requirements, well, only 2% of uh, mail services are fully compliant. It means that only uh, two percent of, um, uh, or, or rather, the, the emails from these two percent of the services will not be labeled as spam by neither Yandex nor uh, Mail.ru. The SPF records uh, seem to be um, doing better. SPF means that these domains have uh, outgoing email but no incoming email. It means that half uh, of the cases. 
the uh, mail on these domains exists only as a sending service. Maybe many of the domains are parked. Maybe that's the explanation. We didn't analyze that, though. The zones with uh, uh, announced uh, standard support, well, Start Dome now has the statistics that I'm sharing on this slide. Uh, the trend is also um, quite strong. Start TLS, Stuttles is, um, is, is, is a secure connection between different, uh, different mail servers, let's put it this way and between uh, uh, the user of a mail service and the mail service itself. Uh, things look, look pretty, pretty good. Here, um, in about 60% of cases, if the mail service is active on the domain, uh, it uh, also has the start TLS support. We launched a signed documents validation service. What it does, it checks electronic signatures on the documents in accordance with uh, the law. And it covers both qualified and unqualified e-signatures. It is a relevant service today as part of the digital economy and recent government initiatives. Um, E-signature is being implemented quite actively. And now a certification center is also developing fast. We now offer uh, a service that checks certificates automatically online. And very soon we will be launching a TCI bot that uh, just like Let's Encrypt will issue certificates. This is important because that's part of our strategy. We at the certification center want to be able to fully replace Western infrastructure should the need arise. Let's Encrypt is highly automated and we are uh, trying to copy the best practice. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, you can ask me now, or uh, you can find me uh, outside of this session. I can see that we have at least one question in the room. Hi, my name is Vadim Mikhailov. I'm from cctld.ru. I have a question on your last slide where you talk about the certification center. Have you already talked to Atom and Yandex browsers uh, to make sure that uh, they uh, carry your certificates uh, by default? Well, no, we do not have this agreement yet. Uh, and I'll explain why. Uh, we do not have a mechanism to support certificates in the browsers. Uh, it's not possible neither technically nor legislatively. Uh, Atom and Yandex browsers, uh, they uh, only have one root of the national certification center and they can't add another. Why? Because the browsers themselves do not have a mechanism to support several routes. We expect uh, this support uh, to be included into Chromium, uh, that is the basis for these browsers, uh, and we expect it to appear this year, but uh, but as of now, there isn't a single mechanism in Russia, a local mechanism, I mean, that would enable recognition of the root of the National uh, Certifying Center. There is no uh, recognition management or control um, mechanism. Right, thank you very much. And let's continue with the partner news. Our next speaker will be also talking online. Please welcome Evgeny Morozov, General Director of MSK IX. Evgeny, we can see you. Hello, colleagues. Can you can you hear me? Yes. 
Ну, можно и так. Um, can we uh, put the presentation on the screen, please? Right, okay, so I'll be telling you when I need to switch the slides. Again, uh, colleagues, thank you very much for welcoming me at the conference and giving me the opportunity to speak remotely. Colleagues from MSKX are here, and if you have any questions, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to talk them over uh, with uh, uh, the colleagues on 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 the site. Let me quickly brief you on uh, our current situation and the plans. The need to localize traffic is very high. I mean, uh, domestic localization is becoming more important by the day. And Internet, internet exchanges have always been indispensable in the process uh, of optimizing the traffic routes and uninterrupted um, traffic uh, inside the RUNET. In terms of foreign players, well, uh, some of foreign players have left the Russian market and the stopped uh, exchanging uh, traffic at the Russian sites, but the volume of traffic is still growing. We uh, recorded about 7% year-on-year increase. There was a change and redistribution in traffic. Uh, the new players, some of the new players increased their volume of traffic and some other uh, players left the peering sites. Next slide, please. We are developing our competencies along four directions. And in the same fashion, we segment the portfolio of our services. Our first platform is IX. It's your classical traffic exchange platform, the um, peering services and IX services. The second platform we develop is Media Logistica. This, these are the uh, services to deliver and process TV channels. Instanet is our third platform. It provides services to set up communication channels from one gigabit to 100 gigabit. Um, uh, we can uh, enable these um, links within uh, up to three working days. And our fourth platform is DNS, security DNS services on the basis uh, of the uh, of the of MSK IX. Next slide, please. One of the foremost themes uh, recently has been security. People talk about it at conferences, uh, businessmen talk about it, um, technical people talk about it, and the Moskia X couldn't um, uh, be uh, left outside of this discussion. We increased the number of DDoS um, uh, uh, security um, uh, services for our users. We added two additional options. Next slide, please. So uh, we added enhanced black holing and flow spec. On the topic of security, can we move one more slide uh, down? Right, that's better. On the subject of security, there are two types of traffic uh, that we differentiate. There is public traffic and there is the service traffic that focuses on a particular group of participants or users. Uh, such as financial institutions or the workflow operators. And for this second type of targeted traffic, we now offer specific solutions, clients and users can now exchange that traffic securely 
within a closed loop or a perimeter. Uh, dedicated channels are uh, used for connections. Uh, these connections do not have access to the public internet and the whole system becomes highly resilient. This technology, this solution, by design, is built in such a way that makes it uh, resilient uh, uh, to outside attacks. Again, it's a very efficient solution for professional communities that have a need to exchange professional traffic. That traffic can be taken out of the public internet. It can be um, diverged into a closed uh, infrastructure that is based on the IX assets. Next slide. Speaking about the global DNS cloud, here is the news that we have. We reformatted and improved the service that we used to have before when it was known as DNS hosting. Now it is known as Anycast DNS. Next slide, please. The global DNS cloud is distributed across um, virtually all of the continents and the global DNS cloud is used by the uh, .ru and uh, .su um, uh, registers and the large uh, government agencies and companies and uh, top-level domain administrators uh, today, we have 22 uh, pops, and uh, our system is quite um, a heavy load system. Now to Anycast DNS. This service uh, was improved. The number of nodes was increased. The resilience uh, of every node was also strengthened. And we are aiming at 100% SLA. Um, well, judging by statistics, we are quite capable of achieving that. Next slide, please. Uh, perhaps I should also mention two more services uh, that target uh, registries. Uh, but we are looking at uh, offering this service to registrars as well. Data escrow, uh, it's backup storage of dom domain registries. The registries are already uh, using it. And maybe there is a question that is worth discussing, uh, especially it's a question that I would li like to put to your discussion actually. Uh, whether data escrow is a service that the registrars will demand. We think it's a useful product. It helps you deal with um, storing personal data in Russia, uh, meeting that um, government requirement. We offer the service and at the same time we are accredited by ICANN. So we would be happy to offer this solution and we are open to a dialogue with the registrars uh, to discuss the technical solutions and the terms and conditions of this service. Next slide, please. The global DNS cloud is a large scale and a complex system that we have been uh, controlling for many years. We see that in recent years the uh, payload on the system is quite high and in order to ensure high fault tolerance, uh, in order to get good analytics, we developed our own OSS solution. It's a software product. It was designed 
as an import substitution initiative. It's a product that was uh, developed uh, by MSKIX in-house. Uh, we use import substituted OSS, and we offer DNS solutions for mobile and fixed line IP rates and DNS providers. Right now, this solution is being tested by large mobile operators. Uh, the feedback so far has been positive. The tests um, are successful. And uh, this is quite in line with the import substitution uh, policy that Alexey mentioned in his talk. And uh, it's a, an important trend these days. Uh, I mean, um, this is uh, the uh, reality in which we live today, and we must uh, make the best of it. Um, that's it from me for today. And if you have any questions, I will be very happy to take them. Oh, thank you for the presentation. Um, .ru.rf domains are based on uh, coordination center infrastructure, uh, TCI infrastructure, and MSKIX. So we are dependent on you very much. If you have any questions to Alexei, please ask them now. If not, then let's take these topics to our offline discussions. Maybe we can um, talk about it. Uh, the data escrow, in particular, during the Galadina. Irina is, um, for the past, what, two years, uh, she's been uh, speaking here and not as deputy director of uh, CCTLD, but uh, uh, she is um, uh, speaking as a CCNSO representative. Yes, hello everyone. Um, I bring you uh, the news from the CCNSO, from the country code uh, support organization. A year ago, I uh, informed you that ICANN bylaws were amended. Now, IDN CCTLD registries uh, could join CCNSO, and the uh, first registry to join was the IDN, uh, the Egypt IDN registry. So everything we did was not in vain. CCNSO is a platform uh, for uh, communication and uh, information experience exchange between uh, CCTLD uh, registries. And uh, working groups are established to uh, further the work of CCNSO and the universal acceptance so working group was launched only recently. Um, a uh, lengthy discussion preceded the launch. What will be the role of this working group inside CCNSO? Because it already has lots of different structures, entities, units, organizations um, that are dedicated to universal acceptance. But we agreed that uh, uh, for CCNSO members, uh, such a working group uh, would be a useful uh, tool Another area of activity uh, of CCNSO is the DNS Abuse Standing Committee. It was established about a year ago, and the members of this committee have already published two. And uh, the third uh, uh, overview or a report or a survey is coming up. They are surveying CCNSO members on uh, DNS abuse topics. They um, uh, introduced a repository, a storage uh, to collect documents describing uh, case studies and best practices on DNS abuse. And of course, this year, CCNSO will be celebrating its 20 years anniversary. Why is it not working? Okay, it's working, good. Well, the main CCNSO function is developing policies with respect to country codes, um, 
uh, domains. In ca case of country code domains, these policies are aiming not uh, the registries, but they target ICANN and uh, uh, they regulate the activities and processes and procedures with respect to country code uh, uh, TLDs. Uh, today, two such um, country uh, code policies are at the stage of public comments. The first one is known as CCPDP 3 Part 2. It's the review mechanism uh, for IFO decisions. CCNSO has completed its work on this policy. The text is fully prepared. The uh, Council of CCNSO approved the text and now it's submitted to the ICANN board. And another policy and the, the other um, document is the IDN uh, PDP for deselection ideas, TLD strings. The initial report uh, is um, uh, drafted. Uh, now it's available for public comments. What's interesting and what I enjoy a lot in the CCNSO uh, procedure very much is that this report is a huge document. So it's a hundred page long uh, document. It includes the text of the policy and lots of different uh, supplements and amendments. And one such um, appendix is called, called stress testing. This is when you take um, scenarios, a set of scenarios, and you test the policy against them. We think that the policy should work this way, but in that scenario, is it going to work like we expect it to? I believe that this is a very productive and a correct approach to testing uh, what we ourselves developed. And using this opportunity, let me say a couple of words on the content of these two policies. What are they about? And uh, now, as to the review mechanism, the objective was to offer an inexpensive, a quick and a fair mechanism to review decisions that were taken by the IANA functions operator, now it's known as PTI, with respect to CCTLTs. It's expected that either CCTLT administrators or uh, candidates, applicants, will be able to make use of this uh, review mechanism. And as to the list, of decisions for review, then uh, the following decisions could potentially be reviewed, the delegation of a new CCTLD, transfers or revocations, and the uh, subject matter of the review is, or the scope of review is whether IANA followed its own policies correctly and the CCNSO policies uh, too, whether in the decision-making process, any deviations were occurring or all uh, discussions and all decisions were fully compliant uh, with the established procedure. And as to the judges, it is expected that a pool of independent experts would be uh, compiled, uh, industry experts with at least 10 years of experience in applying and uh, developing CCNSO policies, and they are the people to be engaged at ICANN's expense uh, to review decisions. And a couple more words on the um, top level IDNs. The general principle is that an IDN domain is also a country called top level domain and therefore the same policies apply uh, together with the rules and mechanisms uh, that apply to the regular uh, GTLDs. However, what's special about CCTLDs is how they are selected. They are not too 
letter ISO codes, but it's a string that's selected, that's subject to a selection process, and therefore it should have a meaningful representation. It should be meaningful. The, it should uh, uh, have a meaningful representation of the name of the country in its official language using its official script. And it should be supported by significantly interested parties, including the country's government. So if at least one of these criteria is not met, then this should trigger as a revocation of such an idea. And if the country changes its name, for instance, or if the country changes the official language or the official script, then this can be the basis to uh, suspend or revoke such an idea. Probably you heard that India is going to uh, convene a special session of the parliament to consider potentially the change of the country's name in English. And if uh, such a decision uh, is taken, indeed, it would be an interesting uh, stress test for this policy. Um, this policy also provides for variant management, uh, but I don't want to discuss that at the moment. Uh, I, on this slide, you can see uh, additional links uh, that will provide you with more information. Well, that was a very interesting presentation. Uh, our next speaker is Leonid Todorov, the general manager of IPTLD. Uh, an association of uh, the uh, registries from the Asia Pacific region of Lydonia. Uh, welcome, our uh, regular speaker at TLDCon. Uh, what's happening in the Asia Pacific region? Ah, uh, yes, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, colleagues. Yes, I have a quick update for you. Uh, well, you know, things are getting curious and curious. Okay, here's my first slide. Um, APTLD, an association of country code TLD registries, was registered in 2003 in Malaysia. As a result, this led to certain administrative institutional financial and other challenges. Therefore, a decision was taken to reincorporate the organization and to move the headquarters of the organization to Singapore. Uh, you know that Singapore has always been uh, one of the leading jurisdictions of the world in terms of doing business. So, uh, it, uh, on the other hand, it turned out that uh, Singapore's bureaucracy is very strong. Well, we've registered the organization, everything's fine, uh, but unfortunately, we met with certain challenges. Uh, um, uh, Singapore uh, banks and their compliance service have proved to be a, a real challenge for us all. You know that at APTLD, there are some national domains uh, that are subject to sanctions, the designated sanctions jurisdiction. So when you have to deal with Western banks, uh, you immediately learn uh, how streamlined the system is uh, and it has its pros and cons. And unfortunately, this is what stopped us. Um, stopped us from uh, completing the process of real cooperation in Singapore. Unlike some other organizations, uh, when uh, uh, people uh, started asking questions, what do, what do we value more, banking in a good country or 
um, our principles, it turned out that uh, the principles prevail and in the current bylaws, constitution of APTLD, there aren't any articles that um, uh, that uh, uh, provide for a suspension of membership or a termination of membership if the country uh, is um, uh, subject to sanctions, if the sanctions are imposed. Now, uh, from the legal perspective, uh, this generated yet another challenge. We have a constitution that was uh, developed in Malaysia in 2003. It was basically written on the back of the envelope uh, by some uh, lawyers. Uh, I, when I try to apply to the real world, uh, it sends shivers down my spine. But um, in uh, uh, because of the uh, process of incorporation in Singapore, we rewrote the constitution. Now it's up to date. Uh, however, uh, the members of the organization asked us uh, to produce a new constitution out of the available two texts, uh, and it was heavy work. We had to polish and consider every single word. Um, to to see whether it would uh, uh, will not lose its meaning in the uh, fast changing world. So we reviewed the constitution and the bylaws uh, as well over a period of four months. But now the question is, uh, when do we apply this constitution? Do we apply to the old uh, organization that is still incorporated in Malaysia, or to the new organization? We're still waiting for the answer from the La Singaporean bank and the uh, chain, and maybe the bank will never uh, reply to us, or maybe it gives us a negative response, and if it's negative or we never hear from this bank, we'll stay in Malaysia, but uh, then the constitution will have to be approved by the general meeting and the, the general conference of uh, uh, the APTLD members in February next year. And importantly, um, just like many other organizations, we are approaching our 25th anniversary. It's going to uh, happen next week. We're celebrating in Seoul. There is still a lot of work to do. 200 people are attending the event. 140 of them are coming to the site. Others will be connecting to the celebrations remotely. And we will be... Um, uh, we will be organizing an additional track during this conference. The members decided that, how shall I put it in Russian? I really don't know how to phrase it. A declaration, um, a statement uh, as to what APTLD is going to do to develop or to uh, contribute to the development uh, to the global internet. I don't remember if I included that on the next slide or not. Can we take a look uh, at the next slide? Oh, right. Okay. Anyway, in this uh, regard, uh, I have to mention that, uh, well, 10 years ago, APTLD uh, was considered a subsidiary of APNIC. Uh, which is similar to RIPE NCC. It's uh, a similar organization acting in the Asia Pacific, but this community, this association of country code uh, uh, TLDs, uh, mat uh, matured and uh, acquired independence. So we hope that this declaration or statement that is currently uh, reviewed by a working group and later will be discussed behind closed doors at the high level meeting the our Korean colleagues, this is how they uh, decided to call a panel discussion uh, representing the leaders of about 20 uh, member organizations. So they will be discussing it first and then we'll see whether this document will be accepted in the modern world or whether it will pass the test of the times. As to the conference on 25 uh, years anniversary, uh, there will be many ceremonies uh, uh, during the event, and I would like to thank everyone who participated, and I can see some people uh, among the, uh, among the uh, participants of this conference. So anyone, 
anyway, um, I wanted to thank everyone who contributed creatively into organizing the celebrations. I don't want to go into details right now. We are going to have a gala dinner. I have already uh, sent out invitations to the people. Uh, you can expect spirits materializing and awards handed out. And there are many people, again, who contributed to the 25th anniversary. Um, and I hope everyone received their invitations. At TLDCon, uh, we'll talk more about uh, registration uh, trends, so I'll save additional information uh, till that session. So from anniversary to anniversary, 25 years of uh, APTLD and then 30 years of .RU, um, yeah, lots of wonderful events happening in our industry. You will be uh, watching closely your registration process in Singapore. Who could have known that uh, the, this, uh, the, the sanctions uh, would have an indirect impact on your organization? Oh, you don't say, you don't say. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation. Yeah, some people at uh, this conference, and there are some uh, people here on the stage, the members of the delegations who will f first go to Moscow to their homes, but probably they will not even need to unpack their suitcases. They will have to uh, fly to Seoul the next day. Right, right. Uh, so it means that uh, we will be coming back to Leonia during our fourth session. But now let's turn to uh, another representative of um, uh, the representative of the ICANN community, Natalia Filina, uh, the representative of Uralo. So what's the news of Uralo? Right, thank you very much. And thank you for inviting me to speak at this panel. Very quickly, um, I am here representing Uralo. This is a uh, part of the at large community with part inside ICANN and with the ICANN community. Uh, this is a presentation for your reference, really. I wanted uh, to remind the audience about ICANN's mission. Uh, the ICANN's mission is to help ensure a stable, secure, and unified global internet. And the at large community and the European community that I'm very uh, honored to represent uh, works uh, to uh, advocate uh, for the interests of, um, uh, of the users. Next slide, please. Andre said that. Uh, our focus is now switching to the regions, you know, from the global level to different ICANN uh, units and sub-organizations. Uh, Uralo and uh, our members, our organizations and individual members of our organizations have certain interests which are uh, indivisible from the interests of the global community. We always cooperate and work together. The only difference is that we are trying to get feedback and we uh, represent the uh, end, uh, end user interests. You can uh, take a look at the map on the screen, this regional distribution, the Europe, yeah, Europe and includes Russia, as you can see, and that's why I am here. So the multi-stakeholder uh, model is quite efficient. The process of engaging and um, inclusive engagement uh, into the development of ICANN policies is also uh, working. Um, Andre asked how we could contribute to the development of the strategic plan of ICANN. Well, one way to do it is to join uh, URALO either as an individual member or as a representative of uh, uh, an at large structure or organization. And you can share your ideas and make your proposals or voice your interests. 
during the uh, strategy development process. Well, I wanted to focus on explaining our um, um, position, our place uh, in the um, greater ICANN community. At large, the at large community represents the in interests of individual users. I um, uh, borrowed this scheme from one of the community guides. It's a guide for uh, newcomers, and you can see that our interests can coincide with interests of business internet users, the interests of government, non-governmental organizations, and sometimes even the interests of some criminals uh, who pursue their own interests uh, in the e e internet at large a community uh, uh, stands for only um, good faith uh, users and their interests and they are the interests that we can bring to the table of ICANN that fall within the scope of ICANN's mandate, uh, including uh, security and trust uh, in the domain name system. Next slide, please. Well, I can say that sometimes, and Andre mentioned uh, uh, the communications and announcements already. So out of these um, communications, the community can learn about our activities and uh, they can um, uh, learn about the uh, events that either we organize or that we uh, join in. Uh, mostly they are outreach activities. And uh, that, that is the um, uh, window of um, uh, our organization. Uh, I mean, all these activities, they are uh, what's, what's on the surface, but uh, there is also a lack, which is uh, an elective body of uh, our uh, community, representatives of different regions. Um, we discuss amendments or initiate changes and reviews of the policies and documents developed by ICANN and uh, other structures. The at-large community and the LOC do not uh, work independently inside the ICANN community. We always cooperate with our colleagues and other structures inside the greater ICANN community. And the examples that um, I can give you uh, are a testimony to our work. Uh, for instance, at-large and a LOC joint efforts to initiate and develop policies. For instance, ALAC initiated the development of the GNSO um, policy to restore invalid domain names, or uh, the, the, the ones that are, are expired, or um, um, ALAC makes uh, statements and uh, communications, or we support something and ask uh, that attention be um, uh, placed on a particular item during the policy development. I don't want to, again, uh, discuss everything that's on the slide, but you can click uh, any of these links and you will see what kind of correspondence the LAC chair carries out on behalf of the community or what kind of contribution we make to the development of policies. This is uh, work that requires a lot of um, uh, meticulous effort. But, uh, this work is very important and thanks to, to such conferences as this one, we can find more participants and more uh, people with uh, bright expertise in the main areas, the academia, the technical experts, the organizations and private individuals that do research and that know a lot about the domain names, markets uh, more than others and uh, that um, can uh, add an additional weight to all the statements and communications that are released by our community. Next slide, please. And this is the more visible part, uh, like I said, of our um, activities in order to participate in the work to uh, develop policies or make recommendations, you should join URALO and the large community. Well, if you are residents of our regions, you can join URALO 
uh, you can join us as an organization or as an unaffiliated individual member. We know that within URALO, we have colleagues from CCTLD, and they are very active members of many of our initiatives. We exchange uh, news and experience at our events. The, however, uh, there are some events that are available to a broad audience, um, to many other stakeholders and actors. These are uh, activities for a broad audience uh, that is engaged in internet governance discussions. All our correspondence, all our meetings, all our um, uh, teleconferences, monthly teleconferences, uh, where we exchange opinions or make reports. Uh, uh, where we get to hear from different regions. Well, you can always join them. You can always be present. If translation is available, then uh, you will be able to join uh, the conferences even if you do not speak English yourself. But in any case, we um, uh, publish transcripts of our conferences and you can use them and do your own translation if you are interested. Or you can talk to us, to your representatives, and we'll be uh, very glad to answer your questions. Now, as to our upcoming events, uh, there will be a uh, round table dedicated to the 25th anniversary of ICANN. It was organized by Spastin de Chalet, my big boss, the chair of URALO. It's going to be a long two hour long um, round table with ICANN founders and real icons. I mean, the speakers are absolutely astonishing. We are going to have members of the board. We are going to have uh, Tripti speaking here. Uh, I mean, uh, he's going to be uh, a walk down memory lane. Uh, so please join it. Uh, this roundtable discussion is to be held on the 18th of September during 1978 in Hamburg. And very soon the at lunch session schedule will be ready. We intend to, how do I put it in Russian? We are going to, we intend to um, uh, have discussions with other ICANN institutional entities, and we are going to have open plenary sessions dedicated to broader topics uh, of uh, the technical progress of ICANN um, and new technologies. Emerging technologies uh, of the internet. So you, uh, you can click on this uh, schedule link, the planning committee, and we are working right now. Uh, the schedule is not yet settled, uh, but uh, very soon we will publish the final um, timetable. During the fellowship session, the Uvalo representatives will uh, make their own uh, presentation to the fellows. And Chris Mandini also mentioned that uh, at the opening of the session, we uh, want to make our community more inclusive. That's why we are currently developing a welcome package, which will actually be an e-tool uh, providing simple answers uh, to the questions of all the novices or everyone who plans to join our activities. On a daily basis, I try to collect the news so that every month we can publish a URALO uh, news sheet. Uh, maybe you received it, uh, you, you are receiving it, or you are reading it. We think that it's an interesting collection of links to the upcoming events and the recent updates and reports from our members uh, who attended this or that conference or events on internet governance. Uh, it includes updates about our internal uh, proceedings. Uh, so it provides you a lot of information about the life and times of our community. 
outreach and engagement. We um, do a lot of outreach and engagement too. Uh, we'd like to expand the membership, the number of uh, numbers of our community. Euralo has a financial plan for the next year, and they are not actually uh, calendar years, but financial year year uh, years uh, that we follow. Um, and our financial year is June to June, so we are currently in the June uh, in the um, financial uh, year 2024. Anyway. Uh, these are difficult times, like I was saying, and it's very important that we expand our presence in the countries of our large region. It's a bit difficult to do right now, but uh, we use all our resources. We are not a political body. We never such a point. Well, how shall I put it? We do not uh, want to diminish the rights of end users in any uh, country. Instead, we want to make sure that all internet users benefit from the internet regardless of the language they speak or the country in which they live. We want uh, the internet to be stable and operable for everyone uh, anywhere. Um, so again, uh, should you have any further questions, uh, you know how to find me, and thank you for listening. That was an exhaustive presentation. Maybe we can have um, a joint meeting um, uh, of uh, our youth council and you, Rallo, ahead of the Kyoto meeting in October. I think there are many points that we can discuss. I'd like to um, now ask Evgeny Kuskevich to uh, take the floor. He is the head of the WSU um, uh, registry. And uh, Georgi, I'd like you to um, substitute me here for a while uh, because uh, some people from the organizing uh, committee will have to um, go to the Petrozavodsk State University to read a lecture on secure internet, but we will be coming back soon. Right, thank you. Thank you, Andrei. Evgeny, yes. Over to you, Andre uh, has already mentioned that many organizations are celebrating different anniversaries this year. RIPN is celebrating 30 years this year, to tell you the truth. I only have one slide in my presentation, so uh, let's uh, turn to it directly. Uh, uh, RIPN and Data SU, we um, uh, are working to harmonize uh, the uh, uh, CCTLD zone rules together with, with the coordination center for .ru.rf. Uh, we want the rules uh, for the users of various national domains to be the same, to 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 be to be the same, um, uh, preferably, and also together with the TCI, uh, we are working to implement transfer of domain names between the registrars using info codes. And I'd like to uh, thank TCI because they have always been extremely uh, responsive and cooperative. They are constantly updating the technical infrastructure. They implemented RDAP, for instance, like they said in their presentation. We are constantly fighting crime, and this is our routine. It's something that we do all the time. We work with complaints and with uh, the competent institutions. Uh, this TLD has uh, this wonderful project that's called the Domain Patrol. It helps us a lot. And we are also engaged in international cooperation next week. We will be participating in the APTLD conference. And despite the difficult uh, geopolitical situation, we are still uh, taking part in various international events. And we represent our country at international sites. Thank you. That's it from me. Well, thank you, Andre. Right. Uh, thank you, Evgeny. That was quite concise. Um, I have this question. Uh, fighting crime, you said if I fight crime, crime, how, how do you do it? Can you um, give us a bit more details? Well, we receive requests or complaints. Uh, it's part of our um, routine uh, workflow. We use the domain patrol uh, system. Uh, Compton authorities, registrars are connected to it. We are monitoring the situation. We want 
uh, to make uh, the national domain zone, and that is you, Helena. Okay, um, it's your more. We're going to have uh, session number six, and I invite you to, to participate in it, not as a speaker, but uh, as a contributor. R right. So as far as I understand, our next speaker is Pavel Gusev. Pavel, uh, can you introduce yourself? Because colleagues are telling me that we have running out of time. It's a pleasure to see you. So what do you bring to the table today? Yes, I'd like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to um, brief you on the news of Kaznik. Can we have the slides? Right. I'm head of um, Kaznik, uh, the Kazakhstan uh, uh, National Information Center. It's a re registry uh, of um, uh, .kz and .kaz. We support um, accredited registrars and we support um, domains in the internet. In the last 12 months, we saw a considerable increase in the number of registered domains, 6.5% uh, in the uh, first six months of the year, and in the last 12 months, uh, it's been 8.5%. Uh, at the moment, we have 181.5 thousand domains uh, in the registry, uh, including IDNs. IDN uh, uh, is not very popular because uh, the decision was made by the government to switch from Cyrillic to Latin script. That's why uh, we, we are still, the, the country is still in the process of transition. Um, that's why uh, that CAS and Cyrillic has not, not been uh, very popular lately. And we only have 585 domains in that CAS in Cyrillic. We have 12 accredited registrars. Not uh, a big number uh, for a country our size. Uh, the thing is, in the past, uh, only residents of Kazakhstan could be accredited to work with registers. There was this limitation, but last year in September, the regulator removed this uh, barrier. There, or rather, they added exceptions to this rule for the non-residents who are accredited with ICANN. So those who are already accredited with ICANN can also be accredited uh, as registrars in Kazakhstan, even if they are not uh, residents. There is another restriction, probably you are aware of it, on policing internet resources using uh, uh, in the .kz and .kaz domain areas. These resources must be uh, hosted in the territory of Kazakhstan. And our uh, competent authority, our regulates, uh, constantly runs uh, inspections and in May, uh, following one such an inspection uh, that affected 18,000 domain names, uh, those uh, internet resources were hosted outside of Kazakhstan. So they regulate, uh, um, uh, send out a demand uh, to address the deficiency. They allow some time to transfer these resources. To Kazakhstan and we as a registry, uh, of course, we would like this restriction to be removed. We don't want domains to be um, subject to such a restriction. Well, we know we hear different arguments in favor and against this idea. Um, the regulators, the re re registrars participate in public discussions. Hopefully, uh, some changes will uh, take uh, place as a result of these discussions. As to the technical aspects and the technical news, uh, we cooperate with NetNot from Sweden. 
we install the root uh, iroot server at uh, Kaznix uh, in CMA. It's the fourth, it will be the fourth uh, root server hosted locally. Uh, this leads to better quality for the users and the uh, operators um, uh, who make use of this internet exchange. Uh, the number of servers supporting our national domain uh, was uh, increased. And uh, packet clearing house any cost group was uh, added uh, to the ones that were already running so now we have three groups of service three clusters of any cost service uh, that support the national domains in kazakhstan and the main uh, event uh, from early this year on the 12th of january we generated keys and we signed dot kz and dot cas uh, with dnssec we are using the um, uh, hotel's uh, hardware for keys generation and signing. And during this signing, we use a CDSA core uh, 256 algorithm. Uh, it's our third change of keys uh, throughout history. Again, there were certain deficiencies there in the process, but we addressed them quite quickly. When we changed keys, one of the operators lost their domains. They stopped working because uh, they, uh, he stored more information on cache than what was allowed. So they had different cache service settings, uh, let me put it this way. And therefore the new keys became or were invalid or uh, uh, could not be accepted. Well, anyway, the uh, IP rates uh, uh, complied with our instructions, and we also took action to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again in the future. So that's uh, all of the news I have. Um, I'm happy that I can participate in your conference again. Uh, I will be glad to take the questions. Thank you, Pavel. That was Pavel Gusev, uh, director of .kz.kaz uh, registry. I have a, a question on DNSSEC, but we are running out of time when uh, we really need to move on to our next speaker, but I am going to come back to you on the DNSSEC story. Okay, now uh, we'd like to hear from Director of the Rule Center, uh, Reg Rule, Andrei Kuzmichov. Right, hello everyone. It's uh, an honor for me to um, start with this slide. People said they will be celebrating 25 years or 30 years of their organizations. Well, uh, what you're looking at right now um, is only two years old, uh, two years ago, two main uh, registrars of Russia merged into one bigger company. As to the update, probably you have noticed some changes already on this slide. Uh, last Friday, we introduced the new visual style of rag.ru. It's part of our bigger process to transform our brands and to position them in a new way and the product line that we are offering to our clients. This summer, we launched uh, our own cloud platform that uh, will be the foundation for the uh, uh, massive cloud. Um, <laughs> and at the same time, well, it should look different. The slide looks wrong. They told me no PDFs, only PowerPoints. Okay, here's your PowerPoint, and the slide is all wrong. Okay, on the basis of our own cloud, we have already started providing private cloud services to our clients, and um, Regroom 
is becoming the main infrastructure uh, brand also in the segment of a heavy corporate infrastructure. We have contracts with government entities. Asbir, Mail.ru, Cloud Solutions, Ross Telecom. Uh, well, uh, we can we can uh, let them go first in this race because uh, we are sure to win the race anyway. We are much more flexible and we act faster. In the last uh, 18 months, we've been intensively investing into uh, fault tolerance and security of our clients. Um, uh, already last February, oh, February of the last year, uh, the attack started on the uh, systemic players of the Russian internet, but all the key players use our infrastructure one way or another. So it all started with attacking clients, then we were attacked as an infrastructure provider. Uh, the attacks make us stronger. And this is important, Alexei. Right. I'm not going to listen to all the organizers ever again. No PDFs. Okay, anyway, I'm very impressed by Pavel Gusev's uh, slide and the liberalization of the of rules in the KZ uh, domain area. Uh, but to go back to uh, Russia approximately five years ago, together with the coordination center, we initiated updating the data in the register uh, to make sure that the registrant's data is co stored correctly. We suggested using e-government portal as a, a digitally normalized data set. And this year, sometime in mid-August, we fully integrated uh, with the e-services uh, platform production system. The clients now can automatically connect their Rusant accounts with the e-government uh, account. And now we are waiting for the approval of the regulator to start uh, operating the system. It took us five years, and while we were making progress, suddenly, for five years, I mean, we've been uh, saying, let's bring the order to the domains market. And then in, uh, okay, three months, fine, three months, um, at time, the regulation of the Russian market of hosting providers emerges. Uh, it's a fundamental change. It's going to make a fundamental impact on the market along two dimensions. The market will become safer and the uh, landscape will change. The landscape of players in the markets uh, is bound to change. But we also work in the secondary market. Uh, we simplified, well, actually, uh, purchase and sale of domains uh, in the perfect world uh, are arranged automatically and are safe for uh, buyers and sellers. Uh, again, we are making progress uh, towards this perfect state of affairs. And, and next screen, you can expect a greater update from us on the secondary market of domains in Russia. Item three on the slide, we um, prepared our hosting platforms, which cover more than one third of the Russian hosting market, to work with the Russian certificates, uh, government encryption uh, certificate and uh, world encryption as well, like global encryption. And um, uh, we are in the final stages of integration with the TCI on the issue of Russian certificates. That's part of the input substitution program, and it's part of the whole uh, storyline to make the Russian internet um, safer. And we continue um, ensuring uninterrupted support of our clients uh, and stable, uh, stable uh, operation of the internet. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Any questions to Andre from the floor? No questions. <laughs> then. Yeah, it was a brilliant presentation indeed. Um, now, uh, the microphone goes to Denise Atvalko, representative of the largest registrar in Belarus uh, for uh, .by and .bel uh, domains. 
It's my pleasure. I'll start from 2020, early 2020. We're getting used to the pandemic. We're getting used to the idea of the pandemic. And then uh, um, there were elections in Belarus. The political situation changed dramatically. Uh, as a result, the business activity uh, went into uh, decline, and the businesses were depressed, uh, and the domain zones suffered. Andrei said that uh, the domain uh, registrations uh, correlate with the health of the economy. Well, it is true, because we lost at least 15% of domain registrations at that time. On the slide, there is a mistake. Start of 2023, it has not reached 145,000, actually. We are um, hoping very much to be able to reach this number by the end of the year. At the same time, we noticed a dramatic increase in the registration of international domains. Maybe it's because businesses are reorienting themselves to new markets. Maybe people are migrating. They are relocating to new jurisdictions. But this is a trend that is quite persistent. Antitrust, anti-monopoly regulation. It's an interesting fact that in 2020, the antitrust ministry uh, initiated an inspection into the uh, price collision and uh, increase in uh, prices on domain names. In May this year, the courts uh, decided that all registrars were um, uh, guilty of a collusion, a price collusion, apart from one registrar. If you're interested in details, uh, we have a colleague here who is a lawyer and we can provide you more details. And actually, this colleague of mine is going to speak at the next session. Anyway. Uh, how did we answer 2022? Uh, we have technical um, competences and experience. We have our own R&D. Uh, the law on personal data was adopted. Uh, at the same time, many vendors were exiting the market. Uh, the contract to our cloud software uh, was terminated, and we uh, didn't know what to do. I mean, we, we had to make a choice. Uh, the obvious solution was to um, go into in-house uh, solutions. Uh, so this termination of the contract affected us significantly, and in 2023, we had to develop our own cloud uh, platform. Uh, we didn't have access to any of the Western solutions. Russian solutions didn't suit us very much, and suddenly uh, the prices on the Russian solutions also um, uh, started multiplying. Uh, we were not happy about that. In August, we started developing our own our platform in June this uh, in in uh, August 2022, but in June we completed migration of all our clients to our in-house cloud platform. We also launched Hostagard. It's an automated platform to uh, provide basic DDoS web application um, firewall uh, security. Again, we uh, started with the demands from our clients. We also provide IT outsourcing. We uh, configure private clouds. And then uh, a delegation from our organization will be traveling to Yaroslav this week to an IT conference. Uh, we'll be sharing our experience there. Hosting for personal data, we are the first uh, organization in uh, Belarus to provide hosting services for personal data, and we are fully compliant. We also uh, test uh, and accredit information systems of our clients. We help them um, make improvements and as to domains. We are still the largest registrar. Our, our market share um, did not shrink. It's actually growing, and we are the only ICANN accredited uh, registrar in Belarus. At the end of 2021, by the presidential decree, the technical administrator uh, for by and Bell was, uh, uh, well, a different organization was appointed as a technical uh, administrator. Um, and this is the same organization that was the only exception in this court. Uh, all the, uh, that I mentioned. Пользуясь случаем, хочу пригласить всех на белорусский IGF.
And I would like to use this opportunity to invite everyone to the Belarus IGF. Uh, we didn't host uh, this event for several years, but um, well, now uh, we decided to uh, organize the conference on the 15th of November in Minsk. Everyone is welcome and thank you for listening. Okay, IGF is coming to Belarus, and the final speaker in this session is Munir Bader from the UAE. Munir, hi. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, so what's the news? Hi, everyone. Hello. Good morning. That's Arabic. I can speak um, Russian Arabic and English. I'm fluent in all three languages. We've got lots of news. I'll try to be brief as far as I understand. Uh, I'm standing between you and the coffee break. I'll try to fit my presentation in no more than five minutes. I can see my slides. Well, first of all, thank you for inviting me. It's my first time at TLTCon and I'm glad that I'm here and I'm glad to share my news with you. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, briefly about me, uh, my name is Padr uh, Munir, uh, I uh, represent aeserver.com, we are the leading registrar hosting company in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, we uh, also work in Qatar, Bahrain and other countries of the Middle East. Uh, we are the uh, credit registrar of .ae, that's our national uh, domain since 2008. We've been operating in Qatar in, uh, since 2030, the domain is QA. In Bahrain, um, we uh, have become the credit registrar for BH uh, in 2021. We became uh, all these uh, uh, zones are unrestricted, they are totally open, so anyone, any individual, any company, a legal entity can register a domain from anywhere in the world in these three jurisdictions. You don't need any documents confirming your, your residence, so these domains are growing very fast, which is a wonderful example of how different markets uh, are developing in uh, various countries and how they are generating additional uh, business opportunities like cloud services or hosting. I speak at different forums. Uh, ABTLT, uh, I will be coming to South Korea too. Um, LDNS forum, uh, that's an icon organized uh, forum, uh, yeah, MENOC, uh, Middle East, uh, North Africa, uh, and others. I've been uh, living in Dubai since 1996, and I saw this, uh, uh, this um, uh, city uh, transform uh, from a desert into this futuristic a city. Uh, if time permits, I'll say a couple words on Dubai at the end of the presentation. Next slide, please. So very briefly, like I said, we are an accredited registrar of these three largest domains in the Middle East and our region. We are also uh, members of RIPE and CC. We provide hosting, we have a data center in Dubai. Uh, we offer collocation in Dubai, you can uh, rent racks, you can rent uh, cloud uh, servers or dedicated servers. We also provide uh, site building websites and sell certificates, so WordPress, uh, uh, premium domain brokerage. We are registrars of uh, other domains as well, but basically the focus is on these uh, domains. We also sell .com, .net, and other uh, main GTLDs. Next slide, please. Our uh, uh, target market is these uh, six countries. This is called GCC, Gulf Cooperation Council. Uh, these Council covers Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, and Oman. 
Uh, so the countries can operate within the framework of the GCC. And like I said, we already have operations in three of these countries. It's just that domain area uh, domains are not uh, very developed in order to register a domain there. You need to provide a uh, documents license, a business license, and some uh, other uh, destinations. Sometimes you need to uh, provide regulators with the uh, trade trademark uh, documentation. Next slide. And these countries, if you take them together, they are part of the Middle East and North Africa. And uh, this is shown, this region is shown here on the map. Uh, I mean, uh, MENA uh, is, it's, it's not a formal, uh, it's not a formal um, uh, region. And there are discussions as to which countries make up this region, the ones that are um, shown here in dark blue are definitely part of the region, but there is also India, Pakistan, and some countries in Northern Africa that are often uh, attached to the region. So um, very briefly about our uh, region, the total population of Middle East and Northern Africa is about 578 million people. And the United Arab Emirates population is roughly uh, because of the recent events has uh, grown to about 10 million people. A lot of people came to the Emirates from Europe, from Asia, from Russia. Uh, there are 2.7 million people living in Qatar and one and a half million people living in Bahrain, small countries, but the economies of these countries is developing at a dramatic pace. Uh, the um, Arabic language is the official language of this, uh, these countries, but everywhere you can uh, feel pretty comfortable just by speaking English. Uh, it's uh, considered to be the uh, language of business. I can in 2015 um, did a research, it's an old one, but I uh, saw, uh, I read somewhere on the website that soon they will publish a um, new study, uh, but in that uh, 2015 study it said that if you take all domains registered in the MENA region, then uh, uh, they um, counted with about 3 million domains. Well, I'm absolutely sure that this number is much, much higher today. And even in 2015, the number should have been bigger. Probably they did the measurements based on who is. In any case, uh, much time has elapsed and the region was, um, uh, was, was developing at such a cosmic uh, rate. Uh, so um, the future ICANN study is going to give us a completely different number. If you take domains in the .ae zone, it's growing again at a space rate. Uh, it grew by 39% in just the last 12 months. And today we have more than 320,000 domains registered in .ae. Like I said, it's an unrestricted zone. Anyone can register a domain in .ae. Qatar is also growing 25,000 domains domains polas in bh.ph, it's a new zone. Well, it's not very new actually, but it was updated and the rules and the regulation was updated. And now uh, foreign registrars have access, uh, I think they have more than 40 international registrars in that bh and they are acting this um, domain zone quite uh, actively. And it, now it counts with more than 6,000 domains. Next slide, please. If you look at uh, registrars in the MENA region, there are 10 of them in total. And according to ICANN data, I found um, 2,700 accredited registrars uh, in total, and 10 of them are from our region, that's less than half a percent. In the Emirates, uh, there are four registrars, two of them are active, and the other two, they don't even have a website. Um, probably they have a different business model. And there is a uh, registrar in Morocco, in Jordan, in Tunisia, and uh, in Iraq, yeah, and in Kuwait, of course. Next slide. So there, as promised, Dubai. And uh, well, colleagues from Belarus were invited uh, to the Belarus um, IGF. We decided to host uh, an event in Dubai as well, since the uh, market is exploding. And since I'm the founder and the main uh, supervisor of Domain Days Dubai, I have the honor to invite you to Domain Days 
uh, on the 1st and 2nd of November 2023. Our website is domaindays.com. It will be the first event in the region to uh, bring together registries, registrants, hosting companies. Um, again, uh, the 1st and the 2nd of November this year. Uh, please come. Uh, more information is available on the website. And on the next slide. As uh, so you can see, who will be coming? We have already collected 100 plus registrations for this event. It's going to be an offline event. So we will be renting premises at a hotel. We will not be streaming online. We want people uh, to network, um, to meet face to face. So our objective is to invite as many participants from our region as we can. If you have any questions, please talk to me. And this is my final slide. See you in Dubai. Thank you very much, Munir, and thank you for the invitation. We will think about it, definitely.